the uh, sacrifice. Sacrifice seems like the main thing. First we had this widow, and she didn't have much flour in her jar or much uh, oil in her jug. And yet she made her first cake for Elijah. And then we go and we have this widow who, what does she do? She puts in everything she has, these few coins. And yet, you know, this goes back, this idea of sacrifice, and it is sacrifice. This idea of sacrifice goes way back, right after Adam and Eve. What's the next story? Cain and Abel. And what is the thing they do? They both go off to their profession and they offer sacrifice. That's what it says, almost in a sentence. They offer sacrifice. How come? Who told them? Not much later, in Genesis still, Abram, this is before he gets to be called Abraham, Abram goes off to rescue his lot, and so he goes into battle with some kings, and he comes back with and not only his nephew, he's got all this loot besides. And he is met by a real interesting character that we don't hear much about, but his name is Melchizedek. Melchizedek is a king of Salem, but he's also a priest of the Most High God. And what Melchizedek does is he blesses Abram. And Abram does something very unusual. He gives him a tenth of everything he has, all the booty, everything. He gives him Melchizedek a tenth of it. And this same tenth, or they called it tithe, that got put into the, the, um, the whole Jewish law. So it, it's there in Deuteronomy and in Numbers, all through there, we're all supposed to give a tenth. Isn't that incredible? But it's easy to understand, okay, they've got it nailed down. Uh, let's see, we get money, and then uh, we get nine, and God gets one. Got it, okay. But why would I give... Would I give because it's in the law and Jesus didn't change the smallest letter of the law? Is that why I would give? Or would I give because I believe Jesus is still watching what goes in the treasury? I don't know. I feel funny on those answers. The answer I feel better with, though, is what if I sacrifice because I'm trying to follow a guy, I'm trying to follow Jesus, who sacrificed. He gave it all. I'm not trying to give it all, but I'm trying to follow Jesus. But you know, that pulls the question just deeper. That doesn't solve the problem. When I said, why should I give, I came up with three reasons. But if I'm following Jesus, i got to ask the question, why did he give? Why did he do that? The answer I find most feels good, is there's a, a 13th century Franciscan who was just recently blessed about five years ago or so. It was blessed John Dunn Scotus. And what he said was that Jesus came because he loved us. Simply. He came, he was in, brought as a person, and he died all be for one reason. He loves me. And he loves you. And if you put this whole thing of sacrifice in the terms of love, it makes total sense to me. I can understand it. I can understand Jesus sacrificing for us. Especially, I can understand him sacrificing for me. I can, it's very personal. But it's communal as well. And I could sacrifice for love. That makes sense. But you know, it's not a matter of just sacrificing. Do you notice... He didn't either compliment or, or put a dig on these rich people that were putting large sums in the money. He didn't say anything about them. But he did talk about the widow who put in those few cents. And he's talking about proportions, right? So proportions, a percentage of how much do you give to God. And percentages, you know, with numerators and denominators, I find a lot of times when you start talking percentages, people get mixed up. I really do. I get mixed up sometimes. So I wanted to make it real simple, okay? So if you grab your bulletin, a lot of you have bulletins, I saw you bring them when you got them, and go to page five, you ready? Page five, this is where the answers are. 
No laughing, Joe. I'm sorry. It's all right. So um, right in the middle of the page is going to talk about my contribution, OK? Now, if you're trying to give a tenth or whatever, or a tithe, and you don't know the Latin or the Hebrew of what tithe means exactly, what you do is you take, let's say what your annual earning is. Let's grab a number out of the air. Let's we'll say 36,000, because I can divide it easy. And you divide it by 12, and you say, oh, I make $3,000 a month, OK? So what you need to do now is write in $3,000, OK? Now, don't, do not be afraid. I'm going to say the same words Elijah said. Be not afraid. Cross off the last zero, and there you have 300 sitting there, OK? That's how you can calculate out what a tithe is. When I was working in administration for the parish, I encountered two or three people that I talked to about their giving, and they were tithing. And everyone had the same thing. When they talked about their giving, they had this big smile on their face. And I, I, I just didn't understand where this inner joy was coming from. But they had it. They had it good. So now I'm thinking to myself, well, should I wait until I'm joy-filled and then start tithing? Or should then I tithe and then expect to be joy-filled? And then the next question is, well, where does all this money go? It doesn't go to the parish. Nope, nope. We're not sacrificing to the parish. We're not sacrificing to Father Doug and councils or whatever they have. We're sacrificing to God. What the parish does is it takes the money and it converts it to the work of the Lord. It does such a good job of converting, it's all gone. That's always all gone. And if we give less, they will cut back and they will somehow make it work. That's how it works. But if we gave more, then we could do what Father Doug and Father Dave and Father Jose and all the councils can't do. We could allow the parish to do even more ministry because that's what they do. They convert our sacrifice to God to work of the Lord. That's a, that's a simple equation. But this sacrifice that we're doing, we've got to connect it to God. We've got to connect it to God right here. Right here. In this church right now, this is a part of our worshiping God. The sacrifice is a part of our worshiping God. We still pass the basket, even though, you know, the little bit of money isn't even considered proportional to how much comes in. But every one of us who touches it, whether we're on bank automatic giving or we're on automatic withdrawal or whatever we're on, every one of us who touches that basket should connect our sacrifice with what's happening up here. And did you catch how the, how the prayer starts for the Mass? Father, you know what he's going to say? He's going to say, pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable. I don't know that my gift is acceptable. I don't know. But I do know that collectively, when we all come together and sacrifice together and worship together, it's so much more powerful. I pray alone sometimes, so I pray alone a lot of times. But I don't feel the power as I do when I'm with other people and I pray. And I surely don't feel it nearly as much as I do right now with all of you in the midst of a prayer. It's wonderful, this collective prayer. Now, this same type of homily is being given by Father Jose and Father Dave. And I got together with Father Jose to talk about, hey, different angles and such like that. And he said, you know, Bob, I don't know if we should be asking for a sacrificial giving when their hearts aren't on fire. I thought, whoa, that's an interesting thought. Maybe we shouldn't. But then I thought that I want my heart to be on fire. And I pray that my heart is on fire. And I guess I'm going to open it up and pray for all of you. You've prayed for me when I've always been ill. I'm praying for you that your hearts may be on fire. This thing that's happening, this consecration that's happening, this all of us together and receiving the Lord, this is big. This is the high life of our spiritual life right now. It's wonderful. 
And sacrifice is a part of it. It's not the most favorite part of it, I'll grant you that. But sacrifice is a part of it. And I do understand that sacrifice is a part of love. And it makes sense to me that sacrifice we do because we love. I sacrifice for my wife, my kids, and now my grandkids because I love them. I really do. And I think to myself, how much do I love the Lord my God? What did we hear last week? What is the greatest commandment? The first commandment? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Sacrifice. Shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Sacrifice. I will pray for you And I can't tell you the miracles that have happened since you prayed for me. Thank you.